Welcome back to The Morning Show here on Arise News with me, Katira King. My next guest, Ubon King, is a man who knows how to ride the storms of life, but even more intriguingly, has mastered the skills on how to turn the tide in his favour. Ubong lost his father at the age of 13, graduated with a third class from university, and worked for free as a security guard for three years upon graduating. Living from hand to mouth in an incomplete building for several years, he made a decision that changed his lot and turned his life around forever. Ubong is currently the Group Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Protections Plus Services Limited, or PPSL, which is a corporate and maritime security company that has made a mark in its industry and employs thousands of people. Now he helps young people discover and break limiting patterns and clarify their goals to enable them take action so that they can achieve extraordinary results and ultimately live the life of their dreams. Welcome to The Morning Show. Oh, thank you. I'm privileged to be here. We are honoured to have no, you here. No, no. Let's let's just get the elephants in the room out of the way. Okay. We have the same surname. Are we related? Um, we need to investigate <laughs> that part. We need to investigate it. Now, on to more serious matters. Your story really resonated with me because it is so purposeful. I mean, let's start with you losing your father at the age of 13. How did that affect you? Because I can imagine experiencing something like that at such a young age would have a lot to do with the way that it shaped you into who you are now. Um, till today, it still affects me because um, my father was my friend. And um, even I, I, I have a weakness in watching a film that a, son, a father dies and leaves a son. Yeah. Yes, it, it affects me till now. Wow. And because my father was somebody that we, we did things together. And everything that he showed me was what I always wanted to model in there. So if I've become anything, it's because I've always closed my eyes to like imagine what would he have done if he was around in here. So basically, that's how I started, you know, looking to him. I reference him like that in everything that I mm. do. Yeah. Wow. Now, we are talking about the power of personal branding today, but exclusively to you, we're talking about the power of tenacity because mm. the fact that you had the audacity of hope and really didn't give up mm. is what has made you the person that you are today. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to know how a university graduate decides to take up a job as a security guard, but furthermore, for free, without even being paid. I wanted to prove to myself that I was productive because everybody, you know, looked away from me. Everybody, you know, rejected me. Um, I got disowned at a particular time in my life, wow. you know, and then third class extra year, and then NYC refused to post me. So I thought, is it that my situation was the worst in the world in there? So that opportunity, I, I did not want to see people lose things, so I accepted to serve as a security officer in there. And if somebody gives me 10 naira, 20 naira, I'll take it, go and buy, you know, food on the next street. And it was just basically Gary and Ogbono soup. Yeah. So you just tell them three fingers, that means two wraps <laughs> of Gary, one extra without meat. Meat was wow. a luxury for me. If I needed anything to chew, I'll look for unripe fruits like popo. So it will give me the sense of vegetable and meat in there. <sighs> so my mind was, 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 was set that, look, I needed to just survive mm. in there. I was not interested in what people say about me. I needed to survive. And that became my audacity yeah. of hope. Wow, man, I'm like about to start crying <laughs> myself. Oh my goodness. So living in incomplete buildings, you know, living hand to mouth, what kept you going all those years? Well, um, the first and most important was um, my father was not a failure. He only died prematurely. So, and I know that, you know, um, a, a, a tree will always give birth to its own. So I, I know that I will make it, but how, I was not sure in there, that's for one. Secondly, is that um, I was able to encounter, you know, faith in God's word in there. So I believed it to a fault, in as much as anybody said anything. That was not my business in there. I wanted to just survive and succeed. My mom, you know, we lived in a house whereby we moved from a three-bedroom flat to a room and a parlor mm -hmm. in there. And I would see the landlord come because of 50,000 naira. My mom can't come back home. My mom walk on the street, her dress would tear. I said, no, this is not what I want to see. I needed to be a man enough to take care of my mother. So that, that determination, that aggression, what do I know? What is my passion? What is my interest? I knew my interest was 
protecting people. I didn't want to see people lose their fathers or lose right. their property. So that made me go to places like Oshodi and um, um, CMS to buy, you know, magazines in there and uh, on security. And I kept reading it and reading it. And I tell people that whatever you eat and you continually eat will eventually eat you up. Yeah. So that is how security now became part of my my passion. Yeah. Wow. So talk to me about the decision that you made that you would say drastically turned the tide of your life. What was that one definitive moment? When everybody pulls you away, you don't have anything left. One particular song, you know, changed the course in my life, and that was "I Believe I Can Fly" by R. Kelly. Wow. Yes, that song since um, 1997 pushed me pushed my mind because if I could only see it, I could become it. So whatever I could envisage, all I need to do is look at it hard enough and then I will become whatever I want to do. Yeah. And it pushed me to doing it. Every day is just a new thing in there. Wow. Mm. <laughs> That's amazing. You know, you never really truly appreciate the power of songs, you know, the power of mu um. music to change someone's life. So, in terms of the industry that you're now in, you are a key player. You're dominating the industry, whereby you were once just a foot soldier, a humble foot soldier within it. How did you make this progression? Um, basically, continuous development. And um, my youth helped me because I was not fixated on any um, strategy or any uh, concept in there. And, I knew that if security was my passion, I needed to improve. I needed to do what they call competitive intelligence between different countries. How is it working in different countries? Can we adapt it to this country and all that um, with the climate and everything? So it began to work for me. And right. I began to spend time in executive protection, spend time in guard force management. I saw the strategy that they did in other countries through magazines. So I began to subscribe to them the more. And I began to attend conferences, began to do that. And I said, OK, look. That will not work here, that will work here. So I began to show, you know, excellence in different areas. And to me, 99% is failure. It's either 100% or forget it. I <laughs> wow. don't give excuses in there. It's either I get it or forget it in there. So and I don't take excuses at all. I don't take excuses. If I'm meant to be there till 10, mid, till 10 o'clock, I will be there. Yeah. If I'm to be there by 6, by 6, I will be there. I don't give excuses yeah. for failure. I don't take it. In there. So that continuous build, you know, kept growing me and growing me. And into the security area, I was used to doing very, um, I, I served under leadership that were very aggressive in there. So to make them happy, you have to do whatever they do. I did not know that it was toughening me up on all sides. Yeah. I, I became attracted to very serious matters in there. So with that, I got excited into doing um, executive protection, then moved on to Guard force management in different sectors, banking, um, oil and gas, and co. Then I metamorphosed into maritime security. Wow. In there. So, a few months ago, on the subject of maritime security, a few months ago, the government invested a lot of money yeah. <laughs> in purchasing, you know, submarines and all these things to tighten maritime security. Mm. What do you make of the pirate situation that we claim we are under t attack from pirates on the waterfront? First of all, the pirates are not ghosts. The pirates are our brothers and our sisters. Mm. Now, that place has become a revenue gener generating um, area for them. Right. Now, so if, for me, you know, buying weapons or violence is never always the option in there. You, know, you just need to direct their mind. Now, how did we get to that stage? Now, 75% of Nigeria is made up of youth under 45. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is 180 million and counting. So if you check 75%, that's 135 million people. Mm -hmm. Now, the Presidential Committee on Job Creation report has stated sometime back that 40% of these people cannot be employed. That means 62.5 million people cannot be employed. Now, if you look at the coastline in there, there are people that see some people spending money and they don't have lights, they don't mm -hmm. have the. So the, what they now take on is that if they need to eat, they may need to do something illegal. Mm -hmm. And once mm -hmm. you have tasted any negative money, it only grows in there. So if you now say you're buying weapons and coal, you've not changed the mind. The idea is still there. You mm -hmm. need to change their mind from negative to positive. The mean age now for people that are into kidnap and co it between 18 to 25 in there so that says a lot yes, for the that's, state of the yes, community. That's, that's a lot in there 
Now, if we say employment in there, we don't have jobs. I'll give you a classic example. Jam this year, 1.7 million people took it. Mm -hmm. How many spaces are there? Only 600,000. What happens to 1.1? Now, when they go to school, out of the 600,000 people, 250 graduate and do NYC, mm -hmm. what happens to 350,000 yeah. people inside there? So these people now filter into the society. They yeah. need to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If there's no job, they will find an opportunity in there. So that is where you now need to be in meticulous in taking their minds away from destructive planning to creative planning. Mm -hmm. And that's what made me come up, because tomorrow my children will walk the streets of Nigeria. And if they're walking the streets of Nigeria, what preparation have I done for them? Absolutely. Mm. Now, we are going to delve into this a lot further in our take. We'll be talking about youth and, you know, all the topics that we, we just covered now. But mm. tell, tell me why you are so passionate about the youth of Nigeria. Primarily because I've failed. I've seen failure. And I know that I had a choice to do evil or do good. And if I could do good, why would I want to do evil in there? And I always tell people from this same analogy, everybody is hungry. hungry hunger is the gift of God to man. That's what I tell everybody. It is what you eat that matters. If you eat something that is good and healthy, it will, you will grow well. If you eat something that is bad or poisonous, yeah. you, will, you will die. Now, but if your values are wrong, if your values are wrong, you would always end up criminal. But if your values are right, you end up productive. So that is where it always um, works for me in there. Yeah. Okay, let's take a little look at, you've created a vlog series where you talk to the youth and sort of empower them. So mm. let's take a little look at that. Oh, well. The problem with Africa today is free food. Our young men and young women, 20 and above, stay at home and wait for their mothers to cook breakfast for them. They wake up, they eat rice, they eat chicken, they eat bread, they take tea and they sleep. At 11 o'clock, they're watching Nollywood, they're watching any of the films, buy films from the, from the rental center and then they watch it. Then by 1 o'clock, they're up, they're eating pounded yam or they're eating solid food. They eat and then they sleep by 4, they're watching football. They know everything about the football matches. They know everything about the basketball matches. They know what is happening in, 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 in La Liga. They know what's happening in, in championship wrestling, in championship matches. They know what's happening in even the wrestling matches. They can tell you when Rooney was born. They can tell you when Jeru's son, you know, went to school. They can tell you when Prince Charles dated his wife. They know everything about complete football, but they don't know anything about their complete life. At 6 p.m. in the night, their sister come home because she's watching and wait. What happens? She puts food and it's very little. The boys go out. And then they go and eat fish with the boys or play with the boys and come back. After a few years, they say there's, 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 there's poverty in the land, that there are witches in their villages. I came to tell you is that the person that gives you food and does not allow you to walk is the wicked person in your life. Anybody that does not walk is not permitted to eat. You have to exercise your energy while you are young so that when you grow old, you become sound. If you are staying around people that are not showing you how to walk, look for people that will show you. I paid the price of walking. There is no free food anywhere. Even in Freetown, there is no free food. If you want the price, you should be ready to pay the price. Free food is the enemy of success. Don't take anything for free. For free. Pay the price to, to get results for your life. I don't know why you're sitting there. Wow. Inspirational stuff. You might just be the most inspirational no, person I've met no, this week. No, 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 Honestly no, no, speaking, no, no, no. I mean, from where you started to where you've gotten to, it just, it begs belief. I, it's amazing. All praise to you. No, no, no. <laughs> no for, for me, um, it's tomorrow that is more important than today. The world is, is the number of, of people are growing. There are more people on the earth than there were a few years back. The demand for success is crazy. I have certain figures that I keep before me. Interestingly, um, in 1804, one billion people now in 2011, I mean, 2017, yeah, there are seven billion people. So land space per month is seven to one in there. It's growing. So we need to get people more creative and productive. Otherwise, we will start eating each other. Definitely. And we are going to delve uh, into this in, in more depth in our take. But for those of our viewers that want to keep up to date with you via social media, how can they do that? Just at ubonking.com.
Nice and simple. <laughs> You're not like me. I've got a million different social no. media names all over the place. <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank joining you. me this morning, Obong. <laughs> That is all from security expert Ubon King for now, as it's time for a short break on The Morning Show. Stay tuned, because when we return, it's time for our take. Don't go away.